What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you the build I use for Ember, specifically in the Alcat Last Islanti competition that I am participating in. And that said, that particular challenge or competition is actually on normal mode difficulty, however this is the build I use for Ember on up to core difficulty. I haven't messed around with anything with it any higher than that, so I haven't really tested it on those hard and unfair difficulties, but this will definitely go up to core at the very least. And it is the build I use for Ember just a lot. And as I'm using this build and playing through the competition, people have a lot of questions about it. And a bunch of people actually asked for this build video specifically. So here we are. The nice thing about Ember is that being a companion, there's some things that she gets that we just don't really have to do anything about. And thus, we obviously don't need to walk through character creation with her. And because of the build that she picks up, just naturally, lends itself very well to a blaster caster of sorts, because she is normally a stigmatized witch, and that is what we're going to stick with. We're not really going to branch off into other stuff. But when we pick Ember up, she's already going to be at level 3. And conveniently, she'll already have a couple of feats that we would have picked up anyway. So for her level one, she's going to have point blank shot. And then at level three, she's going to have precise shot. From here, I'm going to go over the feats that I personally like to pick. Now the first one, combat casting at level five. This is just one that I personally like to use. However, truth be told, you could easily drop combat casting for something else if you wanted to. The thing about this build is that it doesn't really start to pay off damage wise until about act three because we're gonna get a bunch of items in Act 3 that are really gonna push her damage over the top with minimal effort on our part. But that said, for level seven and then level nine, we're gonna pick up spell penetration and then greater spell penetration. This is going to add a total of plus four to our caster level checks anytime we cast a spell to overcome spell resistance. Now, most of her damage spells are going to be affected by spell resistance, so it's important that we have feats to overcome that with. For 11 and 13, I personally like to pick up Spell Focus Evocation and then Greater Spell Focus Evocation. Now, what this is going to do is add to the difficulty class of the saving throws for our schools. As a primarily a damage dealer, we're not going to be using that for a ton of regular saving throws, but we're going to be using this for area of effect spells. Nonetheless, things like Fireball, basically anything that gives a saving throw. Now at level 15, I'd recommend Arcane Focus. This is an elf feat that will give you plus two racial bonus to concentration checks, which is cool. And then a plus one bonus to your caster level checks to overcome spell resistance. And then for the last two feats that you'll get from leveling up, those are feats that I would recommend taking School Mastery in, which is similar to the other one, but it will increase the caster level at which you cast those spells by one and then two if you get the greater one. However, you can get those through your mythic feats, which is what we're going to go over next. So the very first mythic ability you need to pick up with Ember is Ascendant Element Fire. All of the damage we're going to be doing with her is pretty much fire damage. For her feats, we're going to pick up Spell Penetration Mythic. You can pick up things like Point Blank Shot Mythic, which will help with uh, attack rolls, because technically most of her damage is going to be a ranged attack roll which we'll get into shortly. But through her mythic feats, you can actually pick up School Mastery that way as well, which is a convenient way to get those. Because honestly, as far as the mythic feats for casters go, there's not a ton besides spell penetration, the point blank stuff for the ranged feats, and then School Mastery, which is a pretty great one, and then Archmage Armor, of course, as she won't be wearing armor, which will give her a much higher AC. And then for abilities, I like to pick up the Abundant Casting stuff, which will just give us more spell slots to do damage with, which is really nice. Now, when it comes to meta magic, what I would recommend is actually using rods for Ember because of all the feats we're going to be picking up. We really don't want to pick up metamagic with our feats. So for metamagic, if you want to use it, I'd recommend using the metamagic rods you'll find around or that you can buy. Maximize and Empower are really some of the best ones we can get as they will just flat out increase the damage we deal, which is fantastic. Okay, so for gear now, which is really where most of her damage is going to come from. Now remember, we won't start picking up a lot of this until Act 3. For Act 1 and 2, Ember is primarily going to be a healer and a utility caster for us. Now, she'll get some damage spells, and I recommend you use them where applicable, of course. But she's also going to get a ton of healing spells that we're going to use, and then her hexes will allow her to do things like put enemies to sleep, which is really handy in the earlier stages of the game, as well as later if you can keep up with the DC on it, but especially early game. So, what are those items? So, in Act 3, there are three specifically that will get you going pretty much right away in terms of damage, and that is the Ring of Pyromania, which you can buy from the Cleric Arsenault in Dresden. This ring is going to give us extra damage every time we deal fire damage. It will basically deal an extra 1 die 6 plus 5 fire damage every time we deal damage with a fire spell. 
This will also give us another bonus to overcome spell resistance with, which will stack with all of the other ones we get. Next up, we have our Gloves of Arcane Eradication. These are going to give us a plus four bonus to our ranged touch attack rolls, as well as a plus five competence bonus to use magic device, but we don't really care about that. The important thing here is that we get this plus four bonus to ranged touch attack rolls. That is huge. Most of the damage we are going to be doing with her is through ranged touch attacks. So we're basically just giving her a plus four to her attack rolls with these. Now you will find these at the Molten Scar. The Molten Scar is a place you go for a main story quest in act three. So you will go to the location no matter what, because you have to. So you'll just remember to pick up these gloves while you're there. It's a pretty small area. Now the third item in Act 3 is Melander's Insult. This item is actually pretty tricky to obtain, but under its effect, all of our fire spells will deal an additional 2 die 6 on holy damage. We become immune to fire damage, but we gain weakness to cold and holy. Cold and holy damage don't come up a ton, but can easily be mitigated. The main thing here is the extra 2 die 6 on holy damage for just dealing fire damage. Now, how do we get this belt? It's a little complicated. In Act 2, you're going to start your Crusade Mode stuff. You're going to be given a Crusade quest in Act 2. Following that Crusade quest has you using your armies to deal with armies in Act 2. So once you defeat the demon army that the quest sends you to go kill, you'll be given like a sigil or something of a fallen knight who is like something wind. Basically what you're going to do is hold on to that until Act 3, during which the Crusade management screen will allow you to craft that into a relic. You're going to turn it into a belt, and then you're going to turn it into Melander's Insult. So a little complicated, but definitely worth the effort. And then next up, Ashmaker. Ashmaker we get during Act 4, but it is very good for us, as it gives a plus 2 bonus to our attack rolls, and a plus two to our caster level for all evocation school spells. So where do we get Ashmaker? Ashmaker is also a little complicated. During Act 2, during the events of Leper's Smile, right before you get to the queen there, you'll be stopped to help someone who has fallen down in a crevice. You need to successfully pull that person up and save their life. You won't hear from them again until Act 4, when you go to the Bad Luck Tavern, at which point you can find them at the bar they will give you the ash maker for saving their life. But all of those items together are going to seriously stack damage for Ember. For a little bit of a combat demonstration with all of this stuff going, we're actually going to use the footage of the fight I had with Melismira, the dragon, in Act 4. Now remember, this is on normal, but basically you're going to see the same stuff, which is why I chose Melismira, because she's a very strong enemy just normally. Now as you can see from this, and if you've watched any of my streams, anytime Ember deals damage, it's going to look like she's hitting the enemy multiple times with any fire spell she uses. This is because all of those items we gave her, specifically the Ring of Pyromania and the Melander's Insult, are rolling all of their damage separately. So we get the damage from the fire spell, the damage from the Ring of Pyromania, and then the damage from Melander's Insult, which by itself is a lot. You don't even need to buff up to do a ton of damage like that. At this point in the game, even on core difficulty, just her level 2 Scorching Ray should start to hit from anywhere from 100 to 200 damage on a really like good crit, you know, obviously, but like 100 damage on average. Moreover, in Act 4, you should get access to Hellfire Ray. Hellfire Ray is amazing for damage. We can potentially get up to 3 rays per use of the spell, all of which can deal 15 die 6 up to our caster level, but at a maximum they'll individually do 15 die 6. So collectively, if all three of her rays hit, which they should because we've got all those gear giving her bonuses to it, unless you just nat 1, which happens. If all three of her rays hit, they are individually dealing 15 die 6, plus the 1 die 6 plus 5 from the Ring of Pyromania, plus the 2 die 6 from Melander's Insult, which means the Hellfire ray in total, if every ray hits, is dealing 45 d6 damage, 3 die 6 plus 15, plus six die six from Melander's Insult. Now that's collectively all the dice together. Now on just a regular roll, you can expect that to easily hit for two to three hundred. And then on a crit, you're looking at probably four hundred. Then if you use things like meta magic, you can take that even farther. Though again, I recommend using rods for it. So at this point, Ember becomes a ridiculous damage dealer by the end of Act 4, which is kind of what I've shown off on stream. As you're leveling up, what I recommend you do spell-wise, is pick up mostly cures and buffs through her regular spell choices from leveling up. 
because the patron that Ember has is going to give her pretty much all of her fire spells just through her patron. You don't even need to pick them from the actual spell choices when you level up. So I like to pick up the healing magic and also use Ember as my healer as well. So there you go, guys. Just kind of the fun way that I like to play Ember that people ask to see. So there you go. There's a dedicated build guide for it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.